Hi everyone, it's Miss Amanda from Livingston Public Library and I'm here sharing with you a story time. Before we begin, let's get rid of our wiggles. Wiggle fingers, wiggle so, wiggle high and wiggle low. Wiggle left, wiggle right, wiggle fingers out of sight. Now there's no more wiggles left in me so I can sit as still as can be. Great job! Our first book is called Sharon, Lois, and Bram's Skinamarink with Randy Hampson, illustrated by Chin Lung. Here's a little ditty that we all know and sing. We share it with our families and let our voices ring. It also has some actions that we know are fun to do. And now we want to sing this special song with you. Skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. Skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Oh, skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. I love you when you're happy and when you're feeling blue. And when you're feeling grumpy, I'll give a hug to you. Oh, skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. I love you in the Arctic, the desert by the sea. And on the top of the mountain, standing next to me. Oh, skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. I love you in the summer, the fall and winter too. I love you in the springtime. I love you through and through. Oh, skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. Be sure to sing this love song with everyone around. When we all sing together, it's such a lovely sound. Skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skidamarink-a-doo. I love you, I love your singing. I love you, you're all terrific. I love you, let's sing together. I love you too. Boop-boop-ba-doo. Yay! Good singing. Now we have some counting. Let's see what we have to count. Oh, there's some letters. But how many? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five little letters lying on a tray. Mommy came in and took one away. Now there's one, two, three, four. Four little letters lying on a tray. Then Daddy said, this big one is for me. Now there's one, two, three. Three little letters lying on a tray. I counted them twice. Now there were three. Brother Bill asked, did I get any mail? He found one and cried a letter from Gail. Now there are one, two. Two little letters lying on a tray. My sister Jane took the next one. The next to last and ran upstairs to open it fast. Now there is one, one little letter lying on a tray. As I can't read, I'm not able to see whom the last one's for, but I hope it's for me. It is! Oh, how many are left now? That's right, none or zero. Yay! Good counting. The next story is called Snowy Valentine, written and illustrated by David Peterson. 
On a snowy Valentine's Day, Jasper Bunny still could not think of a gift good enough for Lily. Jasper loved his wife very much, so he couldn't give her just any old gift. Perhaps seeing what my neighbors are doing for Valentine's Day will give me an idea for the perfect present, he thought. He stopped at the porcupine's house. We are each knitting a scarf for Mother, said the seven porcupine children. A handmade scarf did seem like a good gift for Lily, but Jasper couldn't get the hang of knitting. On his way, Jasper saw a glow coming from the frog's window. I bet Miriam will have a good suggestion, thought Jasper. She always has such wonderful taste. Inside, Miriam showed Jasper a box full of chocolate-covered flies. Landon will be so excited when he wakes up, she whispered. I'm sure he will, Jasper agreed pleasantly. He thought, this is a treat for a frog, but it's definitely not something my lily would enjoy. Still no gift in sight or mind, Jasper plodded past Everett's wagon. Step right up, gushed the salesman. I've got beautiful blooms and fantastic flowers. But all of the raccoon's flowers had wilted from the cold. None of them matched the beauty Jasper had in mind for Lily. Jasper was worried. It was getting late, and he still had nothing for Lily. Jasper, called Tegan, what are you doing out on this cold, snowy Valentine's Day? I'm searching for a gift for Lily, Jasper replied, but I don't know what to do. Come in and we'll brainstorm by the fire, Tegan said warmly. I do understand, Tegan said. I myself have been hunting all day for a Valentine's gift to impress my vixen faith, and I think rabbit stew is just the ticket. Uh-oh! Before Jasper knew it, he was in the soup. Terrified, Jasper waited for his chance. When Tegan walked away to pull out Faith's chair, Jasper sprang out of the pot and escaped quick as a bunny. Jasper was wet and cold and ready to give up when Spalding called down. This necklace of winter berries will make a wonderful Valentine's gift for my mate, don't you think, Jasper? Yes, it is a splendid gift, said Jasper sadly, but I have nothing for Lily. I have been around the entire valley, and I can't give her a handmade scarf, or wilted flowers, or chocolate flies, or any gift at all if I become rabbit stew. The cardinal looked thoughtful. Hmm, no gift, you say? From where I sit, I see you have given Lily a wonderful gift already. Back at the burrow, Lily stepped outside to wait for Jasper. She saw the heart he had made for her. Oh, can you see it too? He made it, in it with his footprints stepping in the snow. Wow, it's really big. And she loved it. Jasper's journey showed the greatest gift he could give, his love for her. The end. Yay! Those were some great stories. Now it's time for a song. Will you sing with me? Oh, wonderful! Let's sing The Wheels on the Bus. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The people on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The people on the bus go up and down, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all through the town. The babies on the bus go where, 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 where. The babies on the bus go where, 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 all through the town. The adults on the bus say, I love you, I love you, I love you. The adults on the bus say, I love you, all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. The doors on the bus go open and shut, all through the town. 
The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Great singing! Let's hear another story. Our next story is a flannel board story called What the Mailman Brought, based on the book by Carolyn Craven. Sunday morning it was raining. William Beauregard had missed the first week of school in his new city and he was about to miss the second. William was sick. He had started feeling better now, but the doctor had been firm. You need a lot of rest, my friend, he had said yesterday. Another week at home and no running up and down stairs. William had nothing to do. He had read all his books twice. His train was broken and he'd eaten all the snacks that he could eat. William stared out the window. His old street had front porches and big lawns and lots of friends to play with. But William didn't know a single person in the new city. He walked around the room and then he sat down at his desk. On his largest piece of paper, he wrote in big black letters, sick. He thought a moment. Then he added, of this, sick of this. He took his sign to the window and taped it there so the writing faced out. Maybe someone will see it. Afterwards, William climbed into bed and pulled the blankets over his head. On Monday morning, when William woke up, he was surprised to find a big fat parcel on his desk. He ripped off the brown paper and took out three paintbrushes and a palette. Under these was a pad of white pebbly paper. And then he found 12 tubes of paint in their own wooden box. Real paints, William whispered. Mr. and Mrs. Beauregard were pleased too. I found the package on the doorstep last night, said his mother. Who do you suppose it's from? I didn't think anyone knew you were sick. His brother brought a jar of water and then his parents left him to paint. William sat down at his desk and looked out the window. He saw a row of black iron railings. He saw lace white curtains. He saw gray chimneys. It was Monday morning and no one was on the street. Suddenly, a figure came around the corner. It was the mailman. Or it looked like a mailman, wearing a blue uniform and pushing a little brown cart. But there was something funny about him. William shut his eyes for a moment, but when he opened them, the mailman looked just as strange. In fact, William thought he looked very much like a duck. All at once, William remembered his paints. He squeezed out the blobs under the pallets and dipped his brush, and he began to paint as the mailman waddled from mailbox to mailbox. It was late afternoon when his father came upstairs. Will, what a great picture, he said. Where did you get the idea for it? Just then his mother came home from work and ran upstairs too. William, another package has come for you. It's marked fragile in big red letters. William opened the cardboard box and dug through crumpled tissue paper. Under it all was an enormous pale blue egg, smooth and hard and faintly speckled. All three Beauregards gasped. What kind of egg could it be? Who could have sent it? William said nothing. He was thinking hard. He looked over at his picture. He looked at his egg. I think the mailman laid it, he said. The mailman what? The mailman left it, William said quickly. Of course, William, his father said. But Mrs. Beauregard got up and stroked his head. I'll bring up your dinner, dear, since the doctor said no stairs. The next day was Tuesday. At eleven, William sat down at his desk. It was still raining and the street was grayer than ever. Then something caught his eye. It was the mailman, or was it? His nose was long and green and scaly, and he seemed to have a lot of pointy teeth. William was glad he was on the third floor. He painted fast and finished just as the mailman turned the corner and disappeared. He taped the painting up and crawled into bed. Just before dinner time, Mrs. Beauregard came up to his room with a box. William, another one, she said. He pulled it open and took out a shirt. It was covered with purple palm trees. See, sunny Florida, William read from large letters across the back. Grandma's the only person we know in Florida, murmured his mother. But she doesn't like purple, William thought. Hmm. Then he looked up. Do alligators live in Florida? Yes, in the swamps. Why do you ask? But William didn't say anything, and soon his mother went downstairs. 
Even before William had opened his eyes on Wednesday morning, he knew it was still raining. But when he put on his new shirt, he felt more cheerful. He ate the breakfast his father brought up and squeezed new paint onto his palate. The mailman came around the corner waving a long, furry tail. It was striped black and white. William made sure his window was closed tight. Then he started to paint. When Mr. and Mrs. Beauregard came upstairs that evening with the next package, he was reading in bed. William, it's not fair, his father said. You get all the surprises. I'm a little worried about what he's left me, William said, as he slowly untied the string. What, who's left you? William didn't answer. Flowers, said his mother. But where are they from? William sniffed. Hmm, do you like my painting, he said. She untaped it from the window. Well, it's very nice, but let's go find a vase, she said to his father. Out in the hall, she lowered her voice. Well, I'm a little worried about William. He paints such strange pictures, and he won't answer my questions. I'll have a talk with him tomorrow, he said. On Thursday, Mr. Beauregard went up to see William just before 11 the next day. The two of them looked out at the wet street. Well, William, what are you painting today? The mailman, William said. His father stood up and walked across the room. Well, do these animals in your picture worry you? William saw the mailman slide around the corner. William saw the mailman slide around the corner. Of course not. They're very friendly. His father patted his shoulder. Don't tire yourself out, he said, and went down to his study. Under the mailman's cap, William saw a shiny silver face. It had round eyes that didn't blink. William took his time painting. This one is the best, he thought. William's mother came upstairs at dinner time, carrying an omelet and a heavy box. They opened it together. He lifted out a spiky, spiraled shell. It was a deep rose color, fading to a most delicate pink. He held it up to his ear and heard a roar like the ocean. It's a conch, said his mother, and stared at it thoughtfully. I just don't understand, she finally said as she left. Friday morning, William laughed when a fat and furry mailman came into sight. William began to paint as the mailman slowly wriggled himself through the drizzle to the mailboxes. The picture was even better than the last one. That evening, both his parents came upstairs and sat on his bed. There was no box. Your doctor's appointment is at 1045, William, his father said. Maybe he'll have good news. He reached in his pocket. Your mother almost missed this one. It had rolled off the front step. Mr. Beauregard handed him what looked like a plain cotton bowl. All three of them stared at it lying in William's palm. Suddenly, William jumped. It moved, he cried. Be careful, his mother said. As they watched, the cotton bowl began to crack down the middle. Something inside was pushing it apart. It seemed to take forever. It's a cocoon, and it's hatching, whispered Mr. B. Presently, the butterfly pulled its way out and clung to William's finger. They watched the wings take color as the butterfly slowly waved them dry. Let her crawl onto a pencil so you can go to bed, William, his father said. Settled into his bed, William wondered what would arrive tomorrow. Suddenly he remembered tomorrow was Saturday, and he had a doctor's appointment. He would miss the mailman, he thought sadly. We're having a picnic, said William's mother on their way home from the doctor's the next day. When they arrived, Mr. Beauregard was already spreading a blanket on the little terrace. The air smelled fresh and sweet, and sunshine had begun to dry the puddles. What's the news, William, his father asked. School on Monday, William answered. I'm all better. Let's eat. He was halfway through his chocolate when he remembered. Did the mailman come? Yes, as a matter of fact, we had a chat. He's been out sick all week, just like you. And sorry, William, he didn't bring any packages. The other ones came later in the day, though, said Mrs. Beauregard. I don't think there will be one today, William said. Yesterday was the last. They looked at him. How do you know? asked Mr. Beauregard. Just a feeling, said William. He was watching a big red butterfly float over their heads toward the south. William waved at the fluttery wings. Can I wear my purple shirt to school on Monday? The end. What a funny story. The end. Yay! Our last book is called It Came in the Mail, written and illustrated by Ben Clanton. Liam loved to get mail. Hooray! Too bad he never got any. Boogers. He checked daily. No. Hourly. No. Every few seconds, but found diddly squat. Nothing. But then, on a day much like any other, an idea struck Liam. 
bonk. Ouch. If he sent some mail, then maybe he'd get some in return. Gotta go write a letter. See you, Jamel. Uh, okay. Whoosh. Not sure who to send something to. Liam sent a letter to his mailbox. Dear mailbox, I would like to get something in the mail. Something big. Please love Liam. As soon as Liam put the letter in the mailbox, the mailbox began to shake. It made all sorts of strange sounds. Crink, toot, whirr, wink, squibble, whoop, wibble. When Liam looked inside, he was met by a blast of fire. A dragon had come in the mail. Ooh, it was for Liam. Liam loved the dragon, but he couldn't wait to see what he might get next. Dear Mailbox, thank you for the fire-breathing dragon. It is just what I always wanted. Can you send me more stuff? Please love Liam. P.S. You are the best mailbox ever. Soon the mailbox was spitting out all sorts of things. Pickles, pigs, a whale with wings, a trombone, a triceratops bone, even a funny bone. Knock, knock. Squibble, wibble, whoop. Liam liked it all. He liked it all so much that he wanted even more. Dear Mailbox, you send the best mail. I would love it if you sent me a hundred. No, gazillion more things. Love, Liam. Oodles and oodles of mail flooded out of the mailbox. Rattle, rattle, rumble, rumble. Uh-oh. Wait, glug. Oh, my. Too much mail. Oof. What was Liam to do with it all? Whoa, awesome. And another idea struck Liam. He probably wasn't the only kid who had ever wanted to get mail. Where are you going now? Gotta write a letter. Again? Dear Mailbox, thank you for all the mail. But I think it's maybe too much for just me. Can you help me send it? Can you help me send some of it to other kids? Love, Liam with some help from the mailbox. I bet Amelia would love this thing. Rattle, rattle, rumble, rumble. Liam was soon mailing things. Brilliant! To kids all over the place. Shoop, 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 shoop. Liam found he rather liked sending stuff. He liked it so much that before long, almost everything was gone. Hello. That was okay with Liam. He could always ask the mailbox for more. Woohoo! but maybe some other time, faster. Oh, look, he named his dragon Sizzle Fritz. And there it says me and you, the mailbox, from Liam to mailbox, the end. Yay! Those were some wonderful stories. I'm so happy I got to share them with you. Will you sing one more song before we go? You will? Great! How about if you're happy and you know it? Are you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! Yay! Great singing! See you next time!